Hey, how's everything going? Hey, this is Admin from Plex God. Uh, finally making a video to catch everything up. It's been quite a few months, and the reason for it is, is that uh, Plex God has gone on a, a series of changes, including the website uh, to the software itself, and including our Wikipedia. So there's been a lot of changes to this uh, site. But anyways, this is an introductory video. Um, I say this is like the second version of it. I've made different videos for different things. Um, this one I'll show you a little bit more kind of like intro stuff last time it was just kind of more of a brief history but um, anyways the whole purpose of this project is basically to help you deploy programs in the easiest manner possible you can utilize Plex Guide on a virtual machine on a dedicated machine on a VPS it just really depends on your needs including um, Google uh, GCE uh, their Google Cloud so long story short, this project would not exist without the support of others. And I mean, uh, everything from the donations to the, to the code that's been pushed to the ideas to the help in our uh, Discord channel. So um, you can see here that uh, we have people asking all sorts of questions and, and keeping us busy for, for better or worse. So, uh, but anyways, let's get this uh, video kicked off. So anyways, this is the website right here. And in order to start off with Plex Guide, you need to sign up for a Google G Suite account. So you just go ahead and click here, click the link in order to get there. Um, and basically, I have some uh, information on uh, how much you pay, what you have to do, but just click this link and uh, you'll be good to go. And uh, with Google G Suite, you have a 14 day trial. Be aware that you need to sign up for their business account. So we have people using their regular Gmail accounts that are using basic, you need the business account. So this right here is your unlimited storage, and this is truly unlimited. Uh, we've had people over at 200 terabytes, so as one user, and again, one user. So you know, a lot of people will come to our Discord a little bit confused. Um, G Suite does advertise on their site that you need five people. It's been forever where they haven't enforced it, so you'll be good to go. But for 10 bucks a month, it's a great deal, um, and, and confidently, like if for some reason they ever decide to and act the, the whole five thing it'd still be somewhat of a great deal depending on how much data you got but uh, anyways you have nothing to worry about um, so go ahead and sign up for Google G Suite um, basically we have uh, forms are here and we tell people to use a combination of the discord and forms the forms is good for capturing data and information that people are having problems because if not in discord people ask the same questions over and over again so sometimes having it here helps us if your problem becomes like really severe or steep and you can't get any inf information please visit our github site right here and you can post information um, and so back to the site so here's just some quick tidbit welcome information that I've been meaning to, to update more again you'll find this exact video here um, and basically like what Plex Guide does for you it gives you a simple GUI interface terminal GUI interface and basically deploys mass programs for you so I can just go ahead and kick this off so this is version 6048 and as you know that I like to do a lot of rapid updates right now I'm using the Edge Edition um, and if I type PG Edge, you will see. Uh, oops, I meant PG Update. That there are several different editions out. Uh, sometimes you'll see some taken out either because there's bugs or there's just been improvements that I know that are critical, where it's just worth updating. So I do leave several versions behind. So uh, this program uh, is pretty easy to update. You know, look, it's just type six four four eight, and I just type Plex Guide here, and poof pretty much I'm in um, mountain transport system okay so anyways here's a series of options that you'll see here and you'll see this menu kind of change up over time so first it tells you um, what version you're running so this is the G Drive edition there are four different editions there is a Google GCE edition there is a uh, not just a Google GC edition uh, there's a one for just like a VPS for a solo HD and there's a multi HD. Typically most people go to G Drive just because it's easy to mount. You push all your data there. If some of you aren't feeling it, again, you can use the solo HD, which is meant, like let's say your VPS is 100 gigs of storage and you only want to keep a few videos there, you can use that or you can use the multi HD. Uh, but be aware with the multi HD, you got to know how to mount that to Linux. So if you're an experienced, something you probably don't want to do. Um, again, here's your versioning here and here's your server ID. So basically, I just give you a quick run through. So one, obviously exit. Here we have different mount systems. So what you'll do is you'll deploy a mount system. And you're asking, why do I need to do that? Well, 
uh, something I didn't understand with Linux is mounts and drives. I kind of understood a little bit because I've seen it in the Macs. Um, but basically, you're going to pick a type of transportation system and basically your mount system. Uh, we basically came up with PG Drive because it, it results in less API bands and faster scanning. Plex Drive is something that's very legacy-like. So if it's something that you want to use, you can see that we say, hey, there's no support. Uh, I attempt to update the code when I can, but it's just something that I've moved away from. And just a note, the bigger your library gets, the worse Plex Drive gets for you uh, in terms of initial scans. Because um, there's a Plex Drive 4 and 5, and they're very resource hungry. And it does work for some people. But um, here, Blitz is the ability to move more than 750 gigs of data per day. Uh, if you find yourself doing that, you can use PG Blitz. We have an automated and manual system, and we're doing our best to update it. Every once in a while, there might be a slight glitch. Uh, Blitz, Blitz also has a user interface that deploys along with it that shows you what's uploading, and we can thank all thank Physic for that. Um, and PG Move is just pretty much dead simple. I got the unencrypted and encrypted version. Please, for some reason, unless you're just like super paranoid about the internet, please use the unencrypted edition. We have many people that went encrypted and they realize it's a nightmare and they go unencrypted. If you switch between either or, you actually have to re-download and upload all the data. I know you just think you can just move it over, but you can't do that. So please, please stick with the uh, unencrypted edition. As long as you don't share out your drive, you're fine. Because you think about it, Google Drive is basically your personal storage. So it's not something you should take like all your folders and share it to the world. Um, it's not a great idea. That's the only time you'll ever have problems. So like if I deploy the unencrypted edition, by default, if you leave this at 10 megabytes right here, it will upload 750 gigs of data per day, like maximum up. So leave that alone. Now you can make it, you can upload it further. So if you see yourself only having 100 gigs of data uploading a day, by all means, you can speed it up if you're very impatient. But um, generally, leave this at 10. And then again, we have um, PG Blitz. I'll show you the manual interface that, that I built here. So eventually, these blue menus are slowly phasing out. Um, they're pretty, but at the same time, they don't really show what's going on behind the scenes. So uh, you, know, you just follow these series of steps. Uh, let me exit out of this. And you can see how the code just moves swimmingly, huh? All right, so next we got port guard. This is pretty simple. Basically, right now, um, you can access uh, all your programs via your port. So you can do IP slash your port. So if I go up here and I type uh, 192, 168, because again, this is uh, internal for me. Uh, 192, 90, port 9000. I don't think it's up. Yeah, I don't. it's not up right now. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and launch some programs. And it might be for the simple reason that I disabled Plex 1. There we go. Yeah. So you're wondering how I got a certificate and all this stuff. Long story short, Duck DNS is freaking awesome. Um, but anyways, Plex Guy will help you obtain your secure certificates and use subdomains. So right now it looks like I have the ports closed. Oh, duh, see? I wasn't even paying attention. Um, so what this does is basically opens and closes your ports and that it will further assist you. Um, so if you, for security purposes, it's good to close your ports, but only do this after you pretty much configure everything. So you saw that I couldn't do anything, even, even, even being local on my own network. So if I go to open ports, let's have this bad boy run in the background. So if I open up the ports, basically I should be able to access it when it's ready to go. So if I type 192, 168, 190, and then obviously this would be 8989, or I could do the domain that I just have and do the same exact thing. Um, but yeah, what? Uh, like I said, I'm gonna write an article on this, but uh, yeah, I actually have it set up where I have a, my router port forwarding to a virtual machine. And uh, yeah, I'm basically able to use a domain to accomplish that. Um, what we have on here is a system called Traffic, which I'll show you shortly. Traffic is what you will use in order to take a domain like GoDaddy or Cloudflare and basically uh, kind of accomplish the same thing. Like you can have sonar.domain.com, like whatever you want. Um, for recommendations for people who are very, very new to this, they get it, they get wrapped up with Cloudflare. Please just use GoDaddy. GoDaddy is just, you click it, it generates two keys, you pop it in and like two minutes later it just works. Cloudflare is... It's a little bit complicated. It's good for protection, but 
it, I only recommend it for advanced users or users who kind of get a hold of things. Now, for some of you that have used PlexGuide before, you notice that it's not asking any questions. In a recent update to 6048, PlexGuide actually does save what um, images that you're using. For new users who don't get it, don't worry about it. Basically, uh, everything is moving. Before, the program would use to pause and say, hey, what image are you using? So, um, as simple as it sounds, it sounds easy to just kind of like just build something in and just let it go. Let's see if it rebuilt yet for this one. I don't know. There we go. So you see right here, I'm able to access the container that way, or I can just do Plex one right here and, and access it that way. Or I can access it via IP. Now, if you do a VIP, make sure you take the TTPS out. See right here, same thing, you should. There you go. See, because right now the ports are open. So basically that's all that is. And you see how fast that was. So um, the good thing about, so the system right here that you're seeing right now is called Anzabel. So if there's any mistakes, it will tell you. And it's one reason why it's great to learn. So um, if you look here, this is traffic, the thing that I was talking about. So if I go to three, this is the um, system that you can deploy. You can also deploy top level domain. So like, let's say I want to just type this and I want Sonar to come up. I just pick three. It's, it's going to just kind of warn me saying, hey, the program needs to be running. Kind of makes sense, right? So you see these are all the programs that I have running right down on this test machine. So I can just take, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, net data. That's something you would typically deploy to your main domain. But um, also for older Plex users, I mean Plex Guide users, it only rebuilds the old container and, and the new container. So uh, it doesn't have to rebuild all your containers. So we're going to see what it's doing. So it should be one more, kind of like round robin deal. And that's it. And so, you know, cross the fingers, you know, let's hope this works. And I uh, forgot to take the subdomain out. And watch, you know, like, you know how when you do demos, it won't work. Oh, there we go. It works. So, I mean, obviously I tested it before. So you can see that just typing that domain, damn pop-ups, huh? So just typing this domain basically just took me to my top level domain. So that's built in for you. Um, the traffic is what you'll deploy to um, set up your domain. So it says, you know, continue to deploy traffic. Yes, you know, we're going to kind of exit out of this. There's where you're going to put your domain. Now, technically, I'm using DuckDNS, which is kind of like I said, it's like a, it's like a DNS forwarder to to uh, wherever you want it to go. You can actually use this on an IP address that you have, so you don't have to spend money on the domain. And you can gain a certificate too. So, um, you know, feel free to check that out. Uh, so do I want to change you, um, change things out if I need to? See, there's DuckDNS. So anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and escape out of this. Uh, yeah, so there we go. So we're out of this. Sweet. Okay. So now we're going to check out uh, PG Wicked Authentication. This is pretty new, and this has been made by Terza or Terza. You know, I, I can never say the name right. Um, but, anyways, what it does, it deploys Google Authentication uh, on top of your domains for protection. It only works on subdomains, not. Um, What's the best way to say it? It doesn't work with your ports. So if you keep your ports open, it kind of defeats half the purpose of having it. Um, so, um, you know, it's good to just run that in your ports. This is relatively new, so there might be a glitch here and there, but uh, working to fix it up, it, it works generally well. So it's going to ask me, uh, do I want to run this? Do I want to uh, continue on with this? Let's see, so right now it's just doing its thing right now. Okay, so I want to enable it, and here's the provider, the only one right now. So you go ahead and just type your email here, and then after that, you'll be pretty much good to go. So let's exit out of this, but I just kind of wanted to show you what it was. Okay, program installer. So for you older Place Guide users, you remember you had a sub breakdown of blue menus, like it said, hey, these are tools, these are certain things. Yeah, it, it looked pretty, but you know what? I was just like, it's just better just to list it all and type it all and you're good to go. Because once you just type it, it just makes the world easier. 
So right now, let's see if we have radar running. So I probably do, but I just want to show you that it actually works. So, okay, so it looks like we don't have radar running. So we're going to go ahead and deploy radar. And this is how fast it, it really is. And that's the great beauty about these containers. The container comes up. Uh, it has its own ports. It has its own thing. And it kind of goes from there. Just to let you know, too, uh, we do allow you to pick multiple images for some. Uh, I do have an advanced cron job builder. And it looks simple to you right now, but it was hell to build. Um, but you see right here, I give you all kinds of beautiful options for all your data to back up uh, be aware that you need um, you need uh, your Google Drive obviously in order for this to work and it does work for the GC edition too so let's hope it works remember we got to take the S out for any ports and there we go so radar has come up and then Trust me, I don't watch cat people. This is just a test. <laughs> okay, so we're going to do radar right here, and this should work too. See? Uh, damn. Well, I'll probably have to exit out and go back in, but I think you get the idea. Okay, so exit. Oh, I know what it is. I got to turn off that. Uh, I got to turn this off right now. So I kind of did a halfway install. Let me go ahead and do that. Just to demonstrate to you that it all works uh, disable uh-huh and then I got to relaunch that container so in the future I'm gonna automate that piece too so let's do radar again but that's the beauty of docker like you know if you have mistakes container just rewrites itself you don't lose your data and, and you're pretty much good to go um, you know the traditional server if you had issues you basically had to to wipe it you know not really much of a choice there schedule backups now okay so if I try this again it should work there we go it works okay so I'm gonna go ahead and exit here and sorry you know I just want to give you a little bit more I know it's an introduction video but it, this is pretty much a quick introduction on everything I just wanted you to kind of see everything uh, so we have Plex enhancement tools so we got a uh, Plex web tools. I'll have some more stuff here in PG track. PG track is based off tractor. Basically it'll stuff your sonar and your radar to death with movies and TV shows of things you don't have and mass download. Great for the GCE edition. Um, web tools. One second here. Uh, web tools basically, uh, you know, installs a bunch of different programs that you can access. Okay. Um, we also have the system and network auditor so we can thank the creator for this one including the initial idea of traffic um, but basically you can uh, do like a simple speed test uh, you can deploy a container uh, you can do a benchmark on your system see so and obviously this is a virtual machine so you never see four cores in a uh, 6700k but it does your download speeds it basically gives you a sanity check um, I found this to be helpful because uh, one time I had a a server with a solid state and it said 20 megabytes and that's one fifth the, the uh, speed of a standard disk um, so use this to help benchmark um, your server you know and, and, and you, sometimes you might be able to find out that uh, your your provider is not giving you the bandwidth you may need because a few people come to our forums hey you know my stuff is stuttering well what are you doing well I'm running a VPS and trying to run 4k and five people well if you if you do that it's not you're not going to get a lot of success out of that so this is also useful too because it also kind of gives you real real world statistics like about like you know how fast things download at certain locations but anyways let me exit out of this and we'll go back in we're almost done We've got a nice backup and restore function here for you so anyways, uh, before, uh, when you did a backup, you could only do one backup and you can only do one restore. So some people get a little confused about this change current ID and change recovery ID. So right now, this, the server right now is called home. The recovery ID is home. Why? Because when you recover your stuff, it's going to look in your Google Drive and it's going to look for the home folder. Let's say you had an older server called, I don't know, old, just to make it easy, right? Well, you would change the recovery ID to old but you leave the current IDs the same. Because remember, this is the current server. This is something you will 
you only change because you don't like the name. This The only time you change this is when you're deploying a new server and you're trying to recover data from an older one, or you just want to recover data. So anyways, we're going to back up a solo program here for demo purposes. I think I don't have our clone configured, so it may give me some errors, but it's just going to kind of give you a general idea. And that's something that I need to build in. And let's see if it backed it up. Yep, errors. So... Yep, there's nothing in the config file. So anyways, you got to have your R clone configured for this work, but I think you get the idea. So, and if you do restore, it does the same thing. It checks that folder and it tells you what you have available. Uh, and we are almost done. So 10 settings menu. So here's some options here. You can, you can mess with your network settings a little bit. You can uh, have the processor run at max speeds. You can change your download path. I did build the ability for you to have like a second hard drive and you can change where everything downloads to because you may have a 120 gig solid state and a terabyte um a terabyte standard hd and plus you don't want all the unpacking of all the torrents or or um nzbs unpacking on your solid state you know it's just going to cause you all kinds of problems um change the time so you know just some simple relative stuff um and then the last thing, troubleshooting actions, you can basically uh, uninstall Docker, you can uninstall Plex Guide, uh, you can change the server setup if you want to. Um, actually, Enzabel bug test probably doesn't work now, but I need to update that. So these are the older blue menus, and again, you'll see all the stuff phasing away. So you can see that the software is relatively powerful. It, it looks very simple, but it's powerful. And uh, again, this only exists because of the hard work of, of all the people that we have here. So we have the Q, you know, she, uh, she's a co-founder with me who's helped me out quite a bit. Um, again, this is our Discord. So um, looks like some of our founders are offline, but Design Gears is responsible for help implement the HTTPS new traffic. Nailer pushes code, physics responsible for, um, um, he's been responsible for the automated PG Blitz. Uh, Armsby has been, uh, pushing um, Prometheus. No, that's a module. Anyways, he's been pushing some kind of uh, data thing that, that I need to get a, a grasp of. Clown Fuse, he's been help sponsoring the project and uh, he helps people in the room, including um, you know, our other two guys here. You know, I can never say your names. Lil Matty and this guy, this guy's, uh, this guy's, right? Um, these are some community founders that, uh, uh, not community founders, but community devs that work different projects. And we have a lot of people here um, assisting us, you know. Uh, definitely a bro professor, you know, good guy. Cocaine Biceps has been here since the beginning. Uh, so I don't want to bore you to death with all this stuff. But anyways, uh, this project would not exist for a lot of people. This is originally the GitHub project here. If you do have time, uh, please, you know, start a project. It helps promote on GitHub. If you have severe issues, remember, uh, post them here. We do have the form uh, that you can use. So let me type Plex Guide. And... If you go to the forums here, you can post away. So the good thing about posting in the forums is that it kind of like documents everything. Uh, so people don't ask the same question all the time because going in Discord and blowing us up with the same question gets annoying. But sometimes sometimes uh, some people are around and the question's complicated, you may need to ask there. But if you want any kind of tracking, please use the issues. Um, you can see that we have a total of 45 contributors who push code over a great span of time so <laughs> obviously here me going nuts pushing things she's been great with encryption flicker rate is uh, ultimately responsible for starting up super transfer which has led to pg blitz uh, the creator is also responsible for um, traffic originally and physic right here like i said he's the guy that's working the automated piece uh, terza we got mb core who is a uh, bride who's been helping push a lot of code so a lot of a lot of good people here so but other than that, you know, if you got a second, there should be uh, a PG thing that comes up. You know, if you can click that, uh, like I say, start a project, uh, subscribe to the videos. Again, it does help us out quite a bit. Uh, if you do want to make a small donation, it goes a long way. It helps pay for new equipment and servers and everything else for testing and uh, keeping our form outstandingly beautiful. Uh, but other than that, hey, I appreciate your time. Have a good one. Bye.